Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The Presidential Job Summit passed without too much fanfare. Terence Creamer joins me to talk about the Framework Agreement and what it could mean for the employment outlook. Hi Terence. Hi Shana. The summit was heavily criticised as a talk shop. Did anything substantial emerge? Yes, I think the talk shop narrative really stole the headlines <coughs> and this really shows the sort of jaded nature of South African society, the divisions in society. And while it was government, business and labour uh, and community theoretically all together in one room, I think the problem is that we've seen a fracturing of uh, civil society since the last job summit under Nelson Mandela's presidency in the late 1990s. When, when Labour arrived, uh, it was really Labour. Uh, there weren't people outside the door and put it, protesting. Um, they were, the people were around the table. Um, and obviously civil society is a lot more fractured and uh, the government, I suppose, is in a weaker position than it's been for many years. So I think that sort of headline-grabbing narrative around a talk shop, I think, just reflects the, the, the state of where we're at. But if you look at the actual framework agreement that emerged from the summit, it is detailed and it is substantial uh, in nature. It's 84 pages um, and it really covers sort of a, a very a wide range of issues, right from how to um, deal with the issue, the burning platform issue of retrenchments in a number of industries, including government, um, through to uh, maybe employment opportunities in early childhood development. So you can see it's, a, it's the full gamut. And it's quite impressive in terms of the array of ideas that are there. When you dig a little bit deeper, there's very few new initiatives. So it's really a restatement of some good ideas that have been knocking around for many years, as well as uh, uh, sort of a reprioritizing or a repackaging of some of the initiatives already agreed. One, of, one being, for instance, uh, the 100 billion rand that the financial sector code would be setting aside for black economic industrialists or black industrialists. Now this is, is an established agreement, but the issue is around implementation. I think that's really what the Job Summit was really about, repackaging and reprioritizing a lot of these good ideas in society and giving them a, a little bit of a nudge in the right direction and uh, you know, sort of getting the, the social partners behind some of these uh, important ideas. And the, the mechanism of setting up a committee within the presidency to oversee implementation, I think shows a little bit of a seriousness about you know, not having just aspirational lists of things that we want to do as society and can do to create more jobs. And the sort of, the, the sort of bottom line was that if we implement all the initiatives outlined in this 84 pages, we could push, push the, um, uh, the, the job uh, um, employment numbers or the direct jobs that are created in a year by about 275,000 above the 300,000 that should be being created generally in the economy. So it's not massive numbers given the, the backlog of 9.6 million people unemployed in South Africa, but I think it's a sort of a statement of intent and it, uh, um, and an, uh, uh, sort of a repackaging and a reprioritization of, of good ideas. What does it say about the status of the trust relationship between the social partners? Again, here, yeah, I think we need to see it as a process rather than event, an event. It's about really moving the needle. Now, we know that under the Jacob Zuma presidency, the trust relationship, especially between business, but also between the other uh, social partners of labor, and, um, and the community really broke down to nothing. So uh, I think the, this is really about mending the relationship. And um, I think if we look back a few years, it would have almost been impossible for in a three month period for government, business and labor, even though I'm saying it's not all of labor and not all of community, and probably some, even some elements of business that are skeptical, um, to be able to knock together a framework agreement of this nature. Again, that was an important departure from you know, the early days of where we used to come to these summits in the 1990s and allow everyone to have their say. Actually, we, the, the difference here, there's been a maturing in terms of really understanding what summits are about. They're really about communicating an agreement that's already negotiated. That's what this job summit was about. And in three months, 
this, this agreement was cobbled together by the social partners who, as I say, against the background of deep jadedness and deep distrust. So again, I think it's uh, about, uh, I think in terms of your question, it's really about the relationship being on the mend. What should we take away from the summit? I think the, the key message is that this is the first phase. It's, it's, it's a part of an integrated package of the, the Sura Ramaphosa presidency that is starting to evolve. So we saw obviously the stimulus and recovery plan, which I would, regard, which I would argue very much is a recovery plan rather than a stimulus plan. And it's one where we're saying that we're going to be sensible with public finances. We're not going to promise uh, that we're going to be spending massive amounts of money that we no longer have. We've come to the limits in terms of the, the fiscal headroom that we have to do massive stimulus. But with what we've got, we're going to try to be sensible and more collaborative. So that was number one. Number two is the job summit where you can show, see a willingness around the, uh, from the, the social partners in South Africa to try and take, take on this burning platform issue of unemployment and make some uh, interesting recommendations even in that plan around, for instance, uh, you know, business uh, rights there that they prepared to look at foregoing dividends and salary sacrifices for executives as well as putting in executive pay ratios versus the lowest level uh, in the organization, slowly evolving that into a public domain type reporting. So there's, that's quite a, a, a big commitment from business. And I think that, so, so again, it's uh, coming together, at another sort of moving the needle in terms of the relationship in civil society. I think the next step will be the investment conference um, at the end of this month. And there I think there will, there will be a sort of a, a coming together to look at the opportunities that South Africa uh, has uh, as an economy to get out of this low investment, low growth trap that it's in and look at some of the low hanging fruit Hopefully, so uh, not just about a South African accord, which the job summit was very much a South African thing, but bringing in international partners. So uh, I think we might see some big ticket names at that event um, that will be draw cards and that should uh, again lift the mood of, hopefully lift the mood of confidence around the ability of South Africa to break out of this uh, economic predicament that it's in. And then obviously the next big box that has to be ticked as we have to get over the hurdle of the election. So I think that uh, it is a very much the message we must take away that this is the, the sort of bare bones of the rebuilding of a social compact between the social partners and that uh, it's going to be painstaking, it's going to be slow, but I think it's all about slowly and progressively the long, looking long and trying to do the right things so that we can get, get ourselves out of what is really a very dire situation. I think, uh, again, we've seen the World Bank and the IMF revise our growth outlook down. World Bank to 1%, the IMF to below, to below 1% for this year, and you know, sort of not much relief on the arise and going into the new year, even though you know, South Africa now has missed the planetary alignment in terms of the global growth that's been happening in the rest of the world. And the, now the world is looked like because of the trade wars and things like that is slowing, is going to be going into a slower growth phase. So South Africa is going to have to really redouble its efforts because it's not going to have the tailwinds of the uh, synchronized growth that we've been seeing in the rest of the world, which we've now missed. And we're going to have to deal with the things where uh, that have really the this, this sort of self-inflicted pain, uh, deal with that seriously so that we can at least on that front, whatever help we can get from the international community and the international economic environment, at least we can get on the surfboard and try and ride that wave. But we totally missed the wave over the last couple of years. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.